Hey everyone, so I have decided to start a new project. I have been thinking about building an airplane for a few years. Um, I found these plans online. This is called the Afforda plane because I don't have tens of thousands of dollars to spend building an actual put together kit airplane like are available. So this one, um, you basically just buy the raw materials and build it from scratch. So uh, this will just be a series of videos that I will make uh, just to kind of document my progress on it. And I hope that you will join me. So, um, for those of you that are interested in building your own airplane, whether it's this one or a different flavor, it's important to have a good um, workstation. So um, you can see this is the one I made. Excuse my very messy shop. Um, this one is just two sheets of plywood, so it's 16 feet long. The important thing that I really spent a lot of time on was making sure that it's very flat across the whole 16 feet. Um, it's There's a, a, a couple of spots where it was really kind of hard to get the warps out of, um, but I was, I was able to do that. What I did was I used these floor joists, 16 foot long floor joists, um, and those are engineered to be very flat over a long distance. And then as you can see, I basically just added some supports and shimmed them um, using my, my straight edge like this. You can kind of lay it across it and uh, see any light that comes through the other side. So you can, you can adjust the the edges up and down and you you just want to take some time and have a really nice flat work surface because this i've already kind of started laying it out but this is where we are going to build the frame and then also the wings so it's important to have uh, everything nice and flat in a nice plane um, so another thing that I did before I actually started building was I modeled the frame in CAD and as you can see, according to the plans, everywhere that there's a joint on each one of these square aluminum tubes, there's a gusset. And we basically bolt that onto our tubes at each joint and that gives it strength. So what I did, because I didn't want to cut all of those out by hand, is I modeled the frame in CAD and then I came up with some um, files to have a local metal shop laser cut these for me so I didn't have to cut them all out by hand. and. These are uh, pretty exact. I, I had them drill all the holes starting at an eighth of an inch for me. So the holes are right where they need to be. Um, it saved me a lot of time, I think. It's just convenience more than So that. you'll also notice um, the other thing that I did was lay down some butcher paper across my whole workstation. And what this is for is so that I can basically recreate the exact measurements of the frame um, for each piece. So you can see, I basically start, there's um, a lot of different angles and measurements. So you basically just start, I started over here just because it was the easiest. There's a couple of straight pieces that you can reference off of. Um, 
I mean, you just want to take your time and just accurately reproduce the frame according to the blueprints in real measurements across your whole workstation. Because what we're going to do next is start to cut out the aluminum square tubing um, and then lay it on top of each piece just so that we know we are as accurate as we can be. Um, another helpful tip that I found when I was um, laying everything out on the butcher paper was to just verify because I, I know that all of my angles are exactly right. So I could use my gussets to basically line everything up and make sure everything fit like it was supposed to fit. And so like I have a couple pieces here. So it's, it's just nice that you can uh, double check your work, make sure that everything is laid out exactly how it's supposed to be. Uh, a couple things that's handy to have, uh, a good square, a decent angle finder. I have both this version and this version. I really like this one just because it's digital and it gives me pretty good accuracy. And then I also used just a drywall square. Um, that was helpful on a lot of parts because as you can see, um, like for example, you have distances between things that are square references to this main reference line here. So I have like 21 inches up to here, 42 and a half inches up to the top. So the drywall square was really helpful to have. So um, I will kind of finish things up here. And in the next video, we will start to cut out our square tubing.